As soon as I stopped that last video, I just got hit with the blast of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I, lo I love that, man. The suddenlies of the Lord, you know, suddenly you're just like, <laughs> you're in his word. And then suddenly you just, you go through the word into the kingdom, you know, <laughs> you just get translated from the natural realm into the heavenly realm, which is your home. I love feeling at home in the Lord and he can make himself at home in, his, in the temple of the Holy Ghost, right? That's the temple we are. Hallelujah. Anyways, last video, we made it up to verse four. <laughs> We're reading Proverbs. May take a million years to get through it, but we've got the time. <laughs> you know, we were in the eternal gospel. Hallelujah. He was crucified from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. So that his crucifixion is our crucifixion too, so that we can enjoy the blessings of being raised with him and seated with him in heavenly places, far above all the principalities and the devils and all their works. We can walk in the perfect works of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going through Proverbs here. We're, we're learning about the impartation of spiritual understanding. But we got to use this impartation of spiritual understanding as keys to unlock the treasures of true knowledge. Which we found out last video, which is revelation knowledge. The revealing knowledge of God that empowers us to walk in God. Man, you want to walk with God like Enoch walked? He was walking in the glory. <laughs> Man, I just, I want that more than anything. It's from the beginning of my walk with God till this very day, nothing else matters more than to walk with Him. And to walk with Him is not just in your mind. God is the glory. If you're walking with God, you're walking in the glory. I mean, you're walking down the street. And then all of a sudden, boom, you get hit by the anointing. <laughs> He's the anointed one. One time my sister, she was having, she couldn't breathe. She was like choking on the phone. And, and my mom was like, Chris, come and pray quickly for your sister. She's like, oh, everyone's all in panic. She can't breathe. She can die, you know. And I thought like, well, I've been watching Benny Hinn on my VHS tapes. I'll just pray like Benny Hinn. So I went over to the phone and grabbed the phone. Give me the phone. I'll pray for her. And I said, in the name of Jesus. I don't know what happened to my voice. My voice went like an octave higher. And I, I said, like, what happened? I think I had a bubble in my throat or something. And uh, I forgot. How does Benny Hinn pray? Uh, I'm searching for the words. I forgot. How does, how does Benny Hinn pray? I'm trying to pray like Benny Hinn. Because <laughs> he would pray for the sick and they get healed and they get their testimonies and stuff like that. That's all I knew as a new believer. And then all of a sudden, I hear this laughter. <laughs> My sister starts laughing at me. She's like, why did you put him on the phone? Put my mom back on the phone. And she's laughing hysterically at me. Uh, come on, I'm doing my best. In the name of Jesus, breathe. You know, <laughs> you had to have that in the name. I was using all the fleshly mannerisms to make it sound spiritual. And she thought it was hilarious. And she laughed so hard that she forgot she couldn't breathe. <laughs> you know? Oh, it's like she started breathing from another dimension. <laughs> Laughter is like good medicine. <laughs> yeah, fine. Laugh at me. As long as, as long as the prayer worked. I don't hear <laughs> He'll use the foolish things to confound the wise. And I thought I was so wise. If I could pray just like Benny Hinn, I know she'll be healed. No, man. It was so weak and so pathetic that she ended up laughing at her little brother. <laughs> and then, but she got healed. <laughs> so, hey, man, it's, as long as we have the results, that's all that matters. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then I was a little bit... My pride was crushed a little bit, but I was okay. I'm like, ah, whatever, it worked. She got healed, hallelujah. And I told my mom, I'm going to go to Safeway. I'm going to go for a walk. I can't remember what I wanted to go get, like some Pepsi or something. And so I'm walking down the street. I feel nothing. I'm just kind of like remembering the prayer. Like, man, I got so much growth to do. And all of a sudden, oh, I got hit by the glory. I'm just walking down the street. And it's like, man, it's like almost like God was laughing too. It's 
It's like, man, everyone's laughing at me. <laughs> you know, the joy of the Lord's our strength. We got to find the things that bring him joy. And when his little kids step out, you know, whatever measure, it doesn't matter. It's like you can almost feel the Lord laughing. <laughs> he's not laughing with you. He's laughing at you. <laughs> oh, man. But it brought him such joy. I was like, whoa, the presence of God is here. And I'm all by myself. I'm looking around. Maybe I got to go prophesy over someone. You know, I got this works mentality. I didn't have the Martha, the Mary, I mean. I had the Martha, the Martha vibe, not the Mary just sit at his feet and like enjoy the Lord and enjoy the presence of God. I was like, I got to do something. I got to prophesy. I don't even know how to prophesy. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, it was just these small baby steps of learning how to walk with God. And then as you begin walking more with God, you can just like, you can just stop and just sit in that peace. You can just stop and just sit in his presence and enjoy the presence of God. And then he would show up in my room. I'd just be laying on my, oh, I'm supposed to read in the Bible. Eh? <laughs> Maybe the Martha, oh, step aside, Martha. We're going to be married today right now. I'd be laying on my bed and I could feel the Holy Spirit just brooding it's like whoa where did this come from and then i'm like thank you for the peace god and then he would just slowly lift off and then i realized i don't want to go to bed i don't want to go to sleep man i want to sit in this peace lord where did you go god where did you go and he'd be playing hide and go seek with me he didn't go anywhere <laughs> he's still in me but I'm, I'm searching for the presence of the lord and it's like you can always find you could always find him by the door. It's like he has his foot sticking out, you know, underneath the door. <laughs> Just leaves enough there for you to see. It's like, hey, man, I see that piece hanging out over there by the door. God, in Revelation chapter 4. So I lean into the door. Oh, the piece is back. And I'm, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For letting your foot stick out from underneath, underneath the door that I can just enjoy the peace of God that passes all understanding. And, and I'm just laying here, just, oh man, I could sleep in this peace. And all, it's just slowly feel it lifting off again. And then I realized a second, hey, the peace lifted. Lord, where did you go? God, where did you go? Don't lift, please. You know, I start searching for the Lord in my heart again. And God, where are you? Where are you in the room? I don't see the door. <laughs> Where's the peace? That oh man, and I'm searching for God in my heart. I'm looking for flipping through the scriptures in my mind. You know, peace of God passes all understanding, ruling and reigning in your heart. Oh, you know, if you search for Him, you'll find Him. If you search for Him with all your heart, so I'm looking for God with all of my. Heart. <sighs> there He is again. Ah, oh. and we would just do this like for hours, like just I, I'm in the presence of God, and then He just like. Just hugging me and loving me, and then I would they would lift. And then I would search for him again, and he would come again. And then I'm just in the presence of God, and then the presence of God would lift, and then I would search for him again. Where's my beloved? I search for my beloved. And then I would find him. I don't know why I'm saying all that. It's just walking with God is fun. God likes to play hide and seek with his kids. It's like He's not hiding from us. He's hiding for us to come and find him. <laughs> and as soon as we find him, it's like, oh, man, why didn't I seek you earlier? <laughs> and then David wrote, you know, early in the morning, I will seek you. <laughs> I'll let my prayer request be, be made known unto you, and I'll wait for your fire to fall upon my heart. <laughs> I think that was Psalm 5 verse 3 or somewhere like that, or 3 verse 5, something like that. Oh man, it was just all like just getting to know our Heavenly Father and seeking Him and finding Him. <laughs> God loves to be sought. One of the ways to seek Him is just like, you don't have to sing songs, but that helps a lot. And sometimes it's just meditating on Him in the bed, in the night watches, just looking for the presence. And if you can't find Him, just remembering the encounters you had and then they launch you into that anointing that, that you experienced during that encounter and then you go into a fresh encounter with the Lord and He just keeps on... <sighs> Waves of peace, waves of glory. Or even sometimes you'll be spend your spend your day worshiping God, reading the scriptures, watching videos on YouTube, and you're just seeking God all day long. You don't feel anything. 
And then you wake up in the middle of the night and then you catch him peeking at you. You catch him watching you. He's just watching over his children in the middle of the night. Oh man, nothing like that security. You draw near to God, you'll find him drawing near to you in the night season. It's not always instant, sometimes it is. Sometimes you'll just like, you'll wake up and the presence of God is there. And then you just go back to sleep in the presence of God and you wake up in the morning and you start your day in the oil. You start your day in the presence of God and then you're just like, okay, this is the foundation for the day. <laughs> Let's build upon the rock. <laughs> the anointed one. Anyways, all that. Let's get back into the proverb. That's why you guys came, hopefully. is the living word of God. Hallelujah. But listen to this. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I'm giving you small little keys to, that you can encounter God as you just meditate on him. Sometimes you need to stop. I did this yesterday. I was like uh, listening to the Bible, playing video games and all that. But it was that, it was that time when I stopped. And I just sat in my little prayer chair and I just started praying to God from my heart. And there was like peace there. That was the best, that was the best part of my day yesterday is just when I stopped everything. I didn't, I stopped the audio Bibles. I stopped the sermons. I stopped the, and I just like put my hand in my heart and I just started talking to God. Sometimes we need to do that. We need to stop the busyness of life and just to focus on Jesus and just speak heart to heart. Anyways, we're on verse 4 of Proverbs chapter 1. Uh, these Proverbs will give you great skill to teach the immature and make them wise. So in everywhere that we've been discipled by the Lord, the Lord can disciple others through our lives where we lay that area down in our lives. Where, where He discipled us in that area, He can still disciple others through that area. To give the youth the understanding of their design and destiny. What is your design and what is your destiny? Glad you asked. You're made in the image of God to reflect God into the earth realm. If you're watching this video between the year 2000 and uh, 3000, we are to reflect the Lord, to manifest the Lord into the earth. To make it on earth as it is in heaven. If you're watching past 3,000, you know it's already on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> but back then, we had to make these videos <laughs> to teach people that your purpose and your design is to manifest the presence of God, is to manifest the light of the kingdom that is within you onto the earth. A thousand years from now, we all know that. That's just, that's, that's, that's prehistoric knowledge. <laughs> but here we need to be reminded that we're not just here to do a nine to five job. We're the light of the world. I used to get so intoxicated at work. I would run to the bathroom crying. <sighs> I'd fall into a trance and in the trance I would see a vision of the, of the blueprints of the Lord. What he wants to do. I saw the beginning of when God created the heavens and the earth and the motive of why he created the heavens and the earth. It was unconditional love. It came out of him who is unconditional love. He removed my fears. He removed my skepticisms. He removed my unbelief because my heart was continually on him and my mind was on him. And so as I sowed into him, I would just reap revelations of him. And I realized the design... I was designed to be one spirit with the Lord so that the Lord can pour his spirit through me. And my destiny was to walk with him through this dark earth and shine the light of him through the earth. Through my friendship, through my relationship, through my intimacy with him. The only way to be the light of the world is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone who's filled with opinions about God, they're not being the light of the world. It's when his words, his opinions, <laughs> shine through our mouths, through our hearts, through our minds, through our atmosphere, through our flesh. David said, my heart and flesh cry out for the living God. So many of us serve a dead God. You know that dead Jesus that's on the cross and he's all sad? <laughs> That is not Jesus. 
That's usually 100% of the time Satan. He's a religious spirit. Man, the Jesus that I know is risen from the dead. The Jesus that I know, he's so full of joy, so full of peace, so full of glory that it's just like, it's, it's like joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can't even talk half the time. You just lay on the floor, just drool, stuff coming out of your nose, laughing, and then you're crying in ecstasy because you've just won something that's greater than the lottery. <laughs> to, to know eternal life is to know Him. It's not that you exist forever, it's just that that life just increases. More peace, more love, more joy, more bliss, more energy like you know you feel feel tired and exhausted sometimes in the natural realm there you're just you're infused with power from on high you can leap over a building you can leap off the planet (laughs) into the heaven of heavens to be with the king of glory you can be lifted high above all the fear of death as his love carries you above it all so your design and your destiny is to walk in him Not try to be like a pastor or like a prophet or an evangelist or someone you watch on YouTube. It's it's just like yielding to the reality of Him. We all have a measure of Christ, but the fullness of Christ is, is measured through His entire body. These proverbs will give you great skill to teach the immature and make them wise and give the youth the understanding of their design and destiny. That's the spirit of understanding that's only revealed to the heart by the spirit. For the wise, all right, for those who have just outgrown their folly and shame and just beginning to be, let's walk in the fullness of his glory now. Let's walk in the fullness of the anointing now. Let's walk in his fullness. Life more abundantly. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But, but I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Let's start walking in the more abundant life of Jesus Christ formed in us. That's what this is for now. Okay? <laughs> Oh man, this is this is where I, this is what I want now. <laughs> Hopefully, I've outgrown all the folly things. <laughs> but if there's folly there, God, I give you full permission to destroy it in the name of Jesus. For the wise, we're all growing in wisdom. These proverbs will make you even wiser. Oh, even the deepest depths of wisdom, there's still more growth in it because we'll grow. We go from glory to glory by ever beholding him who is the true wisdom of God. For the wise, these proverbs will make you even wiser. What we're reading today, this is going to make you even wiser. You want to grow in the spirit of wisdom? Let's keep going then. And for those with discernment, you will be able to acquire brilliant strategies for leadership. That means the strategies will come from the counselor. He'll counsel us out how to walk, how to talk, how to be, how to be free (laughs) through the wisdom that he's written in us for these, these. It's within every single word that is written here. Thank you, Lord, for unlocking wisdom for us. These kingdom revelations. Here we go. Verse six. This is. Six is the number of man. So this is for mankind who want God. Verse 6. These kingdom revelations will break open your understanding. Oh. You know the spirit of understanding that was given to Solomon's heart? These kingdom revelations break open the understanding so that the understanding can flow out of your heart and be imparted to others around you. It's not just so that you can understand and like, okay, wow, man, I understand a lot of stuff. No, no. These kingdom revelations break open your understanding. And the spirit of understanding just sprinkles onto others. So that they can walk in understanding too and know the design and destiny of their lives and begin to walk from wisdom to wisdom. Deeper realms of glory to deeper realms of glory by ever beholding his story. These kingdom realms bust you open. So that the glory of God can just cascade through every layer of your soul, through every layer of your body, comes through you. 
Christ in you, the hope of glory, work out your salvation. Salvation will come cascading through every layer of your soul, every layer of your body and your spirit. When we grasp these kingdom revelations that break them open to unveil, it unveils the kingdom of heaven within you <laughs> to unveil the deeper meaning of parables, poetic riddles, and epigrams, and to unravel the words and enigmas of the wise. You want to know what the unraveling of those words are? If you unravel the words of wisdom, you'll find within those words the one who is wisdom. If you unravel the words of wisdom, you just crack open the word of wisdom itself and poof, Holy Spirit will come flooding through that word. He's the one who, who spoke to these people as they wrote it down. These kingdom revelations will bust open and God will come through. God will come through you. Because that's your design. And that's your destiny. To be the light of the world is to have the Holy Spirit busting through you. Amen. And unravel the words and the enigmas of the wise. How then does a man gain the essence of wisdom? That is a good question. You want to know? How the foundation of all these things that we've been reading about in the last two videos. <laughs> how then does a man gain the essence, the reality, the substance? The essence of wisdom. The wisdom that's first peaceable comes from God. How do you gain these things? It's written right here. We're going to find out right now. Not so we can understand it here, but so that we can have the reality of the essence of wisdom busting through us. Let's open up this word right now. We cross right there. Go through the cross, deny yourself, and embrace himself, Jesus Christ. But let's keep on reading. There's more to it than that. We cross the threshold of true knowledge when we live in complete awe and adoration of God. That's how you walk with God. <clears throat> stubborn know-it-alls will never stop to do this for they scorn true wisdom and knowledge stopping the audio bible stopping the sermons just talking to God and listening to God laying on your bed playing hide and go seek the simple things of just growing with your Heavenly Father. How do you unlock these things? We live in complete awe and adoration of God. When we do this, when we pursue God with all of our hearts, when we find God, because if you seek Him, you'll find Him. When you seek with Him, when you seek Him with all your heart. But listen, stubborn know-it-alls, you know, who, who are those stubborn know-it-alls? Those who have opinions. Those who perhaps they memorize the scriptures for the sake of winning debates. <laughs> I know I did that in the beginning. I'm guilty of this. I wanted to convert all the Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and all these people who would want to debate me. I would just get educated. I would just like memorize all the scriptures on how to like destroy, you know, and I felt a warning from God. No, Chris, this is not the way. And I go and buy all these books, how to convert a Jehovah's Witness, how to convert Mormons. I had like stacks of books, all this knowledge of good and evil. And I felt I disobeyed God. I like... I felt like there was, nope, this is not the way, Chris. I wasted years of my time by studying these books and debating people. And then later on, I found it in the scriptures. 
Where there is contention and debates, there is pride. I realized I was only fueling pride in my own life. I wasn't winning debates. I was just equipping them with scriptures to come against the truth. It was we're using the word of God, not by the spirit, but by pride. And it was disgusting. And then God revealed to me later on that to be the light of the world is not to have opinions. It's not to fight in the flesh. It's to be filled with the Holy Spirit who brings life. Like Paul and Silas worshiping in the prison. We got to bring them an encounter with God. You may win an argument, but you're losing the battle if it's only in the flesh. Because God showed me in a vision when I was laying on my bed. I had this Jehovah's Witness and I was trying to win him. And I read all these books and spent hours, days, hundreds of hours of study. How to convert a Jehovah's Witness. Instead of asking the Holy Spirit, I went to men. <laughs> and then I was listening to a sermon or something on my bed. That's how I used to uh, just, I had this encounter anyways. I was just laying on my bed. Nothing to do with Jehovah's Witnesses or anything. I was just listening to like this guy Tommy Tenney preach or something about the house of God or something. I can't even remember what it was. And then I go into a vision and I see that Jehovah's Witness. And he's standing outside I was in with the shepherd, Jesus Christ, and he was waving like this. And I was standing with him. I was like a little boy. And I could see the Jehovah's Witness outside the gate. And uh, he was looking, he was looking at me. And he couldn't see Jesus. Uh, He was looking at me outside the gate of the shepherd. Out of the shepherd's pen or whatever, you know, the, uh, I don't know what they're called. It's like a gate, a fence. And uh, he was, but he was looking at me. And uh, I remember looking at him, and then I saw his fur face turn away from me and look into the darkness. Oh man, that broke my heart. Oh no, I just wanted him to look at Jesus, not me. Uh, I just started weeping in my room, and I like, and I got on my hands and my knees, and I scraped the carpet. Oh my God! I will give you everything I own if you will just, if he could just come to you for his soul. Uh, I'll give you, I started thinking of what's the most valuable things that I own. <laughs> I'll give you all my musical equipment. I'll give you my guitars, my, my microphones, my everything I own, all my comforts. If I could just, if you could just win his soul, if you could just get him saved. Of course, I thought like, you know, like, I'm like, is it is God's fault why he's not saved? No, it's my fault for not being the true light of the world to him. He was sent, or I don't know, he was in the atmosphere of a true believer, but I was fighting in the flesh, not in the spirit. And I I could not win him to Jesus through arguments and debates of knowledge. It had to be by the spirit. And I did not understand this until I had that vision. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself, Jesus Christ, right? If I be lifted up, I was lifting up knowledge and understanding, but the knowledge and understanding of the natural realm through books and book learning, I thought studying to show myself approved was filling my mind with knowledge, but studying to show yourself approved is what we're going through here, right here. To unveil the deeper meanings of parables, poetic riddles, and epigrams. To unravel the words of enigmas of the wise. It's the spirit within those words that set people free. Not just the words themselves. And it broke my heart and uh, I never seen him get born again. Oh, and it broke my heart. I would have done anything and everything just to get that one soul born again. But I could not do it in my own strength. And that's when God began to teach me that this, yeah, it's all about the glory, the anointing within the words. If our words are filled with spirit and life, that life can be imparted into their spirit. It'll knock off the death spirits off of them so that they can hear. I was like Peter, you know, he went and grabbed a sword and he cut off the ears of that servant. It's like Jesus had to heal, had to fix the mess 
Peter, you don't understand. It's the sword of the spirit, not of the flesh. Had to heal his ears so that he could hear. So many of us today, we just take the sword and we swing it in the flesh and cutting off the hearing of others. And it's like they're looking and they're curious, what's in this pen here, the sheep pen? And then they look away into darkness because we cut off their ears with knowledge of the flesh. The knowledge that killed Adam and Eve, the knowledge of good and evil. Even good knowledge still killed Adam. Good knowledge. But it was that life. It was that life that brought... It was, it was the fruit of the Holy Spirit. His love. His peace. His joy. You know, it's, it's, it's the tree of life that brings life. Knowledge of good and evil. Knowledge does not require life. for It only requires knowledge. But revelation knowledge requires the revealing of the one who it's pointing to. It requires life. What verse are we on here? <laughs> oh, stubborn know-it-alls. That was me. Stubborn know-it-alls will never stop to do this for they scorn true wisdom and knowledge. I was looking for knowledge in the flesh and I thought my wisdom was to beat them and win, the, win, win an argument. But I lost the war. True wisdom is first peaceable, it's written. Because it's filled with the Prince of Peace. And true knowledge is revealing knowledge. You're revealing Jesus to them through words or through atmospheres and through glory, you know. Anyways, I'll stop this video here. Oh, we made it. Uh, we've got three verses. <laughs> See you guys in the next video. <laughs>